Hey everyone, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and I'm going to show you a cool video. And in this video I'm going to show you the CloudPod architecture of Horizon View 7. And I'm hooking up two connection servers together and then I'm trying to log on to uh, my primer, primary connection server and see if I can get uh, a desktop from a pool that's hosted on another Connection server. So the CloudPod architecture allows you to scale out a Horizon View environment and also hook up multiple locations, multiple data centers to each other. Um, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this machine, SA-Client03, and I'm logging on to uh, my student desktop. And my student desktop is installed with a connection server. And I'm going to enable the vCloudPod architecture on, me, on the other connection server over here. And in the end, I must be able to log on to my first connection server. And then I will be transferred to my second connection server where my desktop is hosted. So this is data center one. This is data center two. And this is my client on the internet. And he's going to log on to uh, the data center, to the CloudPod architecture of Horizon View. Okay, so let's take a look at the laboratory environment. Um, so I have one connection server right here, the sa-connectionserver.vclass.local. It's fully installed. I've created some pools. Uh, I'm teaching the, the VMware View install configure and manage training course this week. And I'm always trying to reserve one of the kids to do some uh, some demoing. So it's not completely by the book, but there is one dedicated ultimate one dedicated pool right here, and uh, with an entitlement. So that should be, do the trick. And on the other side, I have my view administrator for my student desktop. So I'm on the student desktop now, and this is my other. Host, it's not connected to vCenter, I think, but there are no pools here. It's completely empty. I just installed it. And what we will do is that we're going to enable the CloudPod architecture on my connection server on location A. So uh, this is just clicking a link and then initializing the CloudPod architecture feature. I click OK and then it will be enabled on the sa connection server. You have to wait for a little while. When it's stuck at 50% and there's still uh, an old uh, entry in this list, then you have to use the VDM utility in order to remove that entry. I can show you that because I ran into this problem where it was stuck at 50%. So let's check if I can show it to you. Uh, I think it's on this one. Uh, yeah, no, this is my client machine. Then it's on this one. Yeah, the connection server. So we're now on um, the connection server. And what I did is the VDM admin.exe, and then with some uh, options here. And I had to remove student a-01 because this used to be a replica host and it was still listed as a server in the list. So no worries, if it's stuck at 50%, then you have to use this command. Let's go back to my student desktop. So we see that the main sa-connectionserver.vclass.local is now enabled as my primary leading CloudPod architecture host and then LDAP instances can join this leading instance. So if I jump to my student desktop installation, the local host, and I'm going to the CloudPod architecture, I can join a pod federation. And that's pretty easy because the only thing I have to do is copy and paste this fully qualified domain name from the main connection server right here. Uh, oh. I'm very bad in typing and talking at the same time. So that's why I'm going to copy and paste it. And I paste it in, control V, local, and no dash in front. And then we have to provide a domain username and a domain password, vclass backslash view admin. 
and the password is VMware. Let's see if this works. So now I'm joining my main connection server and this, these two servers are then yeah, together in one cloud federation pod. So it's uh, trying to log on. I hope I've provided the correct credentials and then it should be an easy trick to join, uh, join the other, uh, other connection server. There it goes, 30% right here. And what it does is that it's creating a copy of the Active Directory lightweight instance that is communicated through the VIPA protocol. The VIPA protocol is used between two pods. And now we get a complete list with uh, everything that's on the main host, like uh, global assignments, uh, the pools that are available, everything that's global is transferred between these two hosts now. Uh, so when this is finished, we are returning back to the main connection server and it's at 95%, so it should be done in a minute. We are going to return to the main connection server and then we are going to create uh, a global uh, entitlement. Let's wait until it's finished. It's finished. Okay, cool. Let's go back to the main connection server. And what you will notice is that with the catalog, we now have a new option right here, Global Entitlements. And when I choose this option, Global Entitlements, and I'm able to add a Global Entitlement. You can choose between a desktop entitlement or an application entitlement. Click Next. I'm going to do a Global desktop entitlement and then you can choose between floating dedicated you can choose if it's for all the sites or within the site or within a pod this is the policy in which order this that desktop is is chosen you can nominate a home site you can select the protocol and you have to be very careful because the protocol must be the same as the protocol that is also uh, configured in the pool and when you have configured these settings you cannot change them so i'm choosing for blast i'm allowing the users to reset their desktop that's also important in, uh, very important and i'm enabling html access i'm clicking next i'm going to assign a user to this global entitlement and i'm choosing for the view admin user and the view admin user right here okay and the next thing i'm doing is finishing this job. The user interface is a bit strange because what I have to do now is double click on this global entry and then I go, can go to the local pools and I can add a local pool. And you see that this pool is equal to the settings I've just provided. If this list shows up empty, you don't have any pools that are configured exactly with the user setting, reset desktop, blast protocol and uh, the other one I forgot. Oh, they can change their protocol. So I'm adding this assignment to my uh, global entitlement. So this is a local pool for this global entitlement. I've already provided the user. It was the view admin user, and they can nominate their own home site. So and I can also do a home site override, but I'm sticking at the default home site, so that's not an issue right now. So I think everything is ready to give it a try. So if we jump back to uh, to the SA client, let's show the Word documents uh, again. So what we did was that we now have enabled the main cloud instance on my connection server. We've joined this cloud instance from the student desktop. I'm going to my SA client 03 with the view client and I'm trying to log on to the empty student host, but there is a global entitlement that is providing uh, a dedicated desktop on my main connection server. If I'm going to the view administrator of my desktop and I'm going to uh, the catalog and I'm going to my global entitlements, you see that the global entitlement is already uh, synchronized with the main site, so he also knows that there is a global entitlement. Okay, so let's give it a try, guys. Let's go to the uh, to the uh, yeah. Let's go to the client three. 
Okay, so let's start the Horizon client right here, and then let's go to my uh, student desktop 172.20.080, and when I select this view uh, connection server, then I have to provide a password, and the password is VMware one explanation mark. I'm logging on as view admin, and this is the global entitlement uh, we just created. When I select this desktop, I'm going to the student desktop. There's no local pool over there, but I'm rerouted through the other data center, and that's why I can get a desktop from over there. So that's pretty cool. Everything is working. Eric Sloof is signing off. Have fun. And uh, please visit antipro.nl as often as you can.